Um, I'd like to start, perhaps I'll just wait a few moments for a few stragglers to take their seats. Thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the people of the Kulin Nations, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Also like to welcome our special guests here this evening, uh, David Southwick MP, Member for Caulfield and Shadow Minister for Energy and Resources, Innovation and Renewables, and our two guest speakers, Helen Kapalos, Chair of the Victorian Multicultural Commission, and Kate Jenkins, Commissioner of the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission, and also, of course, John Searle, Chair of the Victorian Equal Opportunities and Human Rights Commission, Councillor Jamie Himes from the City of Glen Ira, um, and also we have uh, Rep. Zionism Victoria newly elected Chair Shireen Hamber, and also I notice we have our, the immediate past President Sam Tataka. And also thank you all for joining us here this evening. Um, I'd like to start, I think, by just asking you all to stand for a minute's silence for all those who've lost their lives to terrorism, most around the world recently, most recently in Israel, Beirut, Paris and Mali. And also acknowledged since the last AGM, we've also experienced terrorism on our own shores, which has resulted in loss of life, both at Lint Cafe siege and the shooting in Parramatta. Thank you. Um, we also, the minutes of the annual general meeting held on the 24th of November 2014 have been circulated and I assume you've all had the opportunity to read them. Um, anybody have any issues they would like to raise or matters arising from those minutes? In that case, could I please have a motion to ex adopt those minutes? Move John, seconded. Brian, thank you very much. All those in favour? Carried. Um, I now gives me great pleasure to introduce the first of our very special guests this evening, Kate Jenkins, Commissioner of the Victorian Equal Opportunities and Human Rights Commission. Kate Jenkins was appointed as the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commissioner in 2013. She has 20 years' experience as a lawyer and prior to taking up this role was the lead partner of Herbert Smith's Freehills Australian Equal Opportunities Practice. Kate is the convener of the Victorian Male Champions of Change, the chair of the Independent Review into Sex Discrimination and Sexual Harassment, including Predatory Behaviour in Victoria Police, and the co-chair of Play by the Rules. She is also the co-chair of the Commission's Disability Reference Group and a member of the Aboriginal Justice Forum. In addition to her role as commissioner, Kate is the Vice President of the, of the Board of Berry Street Victoria, the state's largest independent child and family welfare organisation, and a member of the Board of Harding Museum of Modern Art. Kate holds honours degrees in law and arts. Kate was recognised in the Australian Financial Review and Westpac 100 Women of Influence Awards for 2015 for her contribution in addressing equal opportunity and human rights issues in Victoria, and it gives me great, great pleasure to hand over to Kate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I hope I won't ruin anything if I close this up. Um, John whispered to me, for those of you who are Carlton supporters, I've joined the board of Carlton, and for those of you who are not, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present. And I'd also like to acknowledge um, everyone here, but in particular, um, uh, David Southwick, MP, Councillor Jamie Himes, Helen Kapalos, and the Chair of the Commission, John Searle. And thank you, Jennifer, for having me. Um, 
so I think Helen and I, we hope will be a great combo. We've never spoken on the same podium together, but I think it's a great idea to have us both here and to give you all a sense of uh, Victoria and some of the protections and also some of the great institutions we have here to help you. So Australia, you would all know, is a real land of contradictions. We're a country with the oldest living, ongoing, continuous culture, but also a country that has had a recent history full of immigration. <coughs> and we all, um, well, certainly Helen and I are very pro the multicultural and multi-faith society and the wonderful benefits of that. And just if you go pure and simple to the statistics of even the last century of change, um, looking at the issue of race, in the 1947 consensus, 99% of the people in Australia were born in Australia, New Zealand or the British Isles. Um, in the 2011 consensus, which was the most recent, 47% of people were either born overseas or had at least one parent born overseas. So that's a in a very short time, a significant change in the makeup of our community. In terms of religion, in 1911, 96% of the community identified as an affiliation to Christianity. Um, by 2011, that was 61%. Um, so there is a massive change in sort of the makeup of our community. So why then is racial and religious inclusion such a challenge in Australia? Even more so now, as we've already acknowledged, the idea of terrorism, which has been conflated which, with religious faith, faith, and even so recently as this weekend, looking at events in Melton. And as I stand up here, I really love standing in front of your banner, which says all of those words that is really important words for our community to go forward. So between Helen and I, you've got... Uh, someone standing here for equality and someone after me who's um, talking about social cohesion and the reality is we're talking about exactly the same thing. So um, some of you will know, certainly John will know back to front, but many of you might not know what the role of the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission is. So I thought that I would give you a picture of that before I hand over to Helen. So, like Helen, we've got a common goal of eliminating racism and discrimination and the promotion of a better society through understanding and cooperation between people of all backgrounds. And we've had the laws in place for almost 40 years, yet there is still a long way to go to achieve what those goals are trying to achieve. So it's not about tolerating low-level behaviour, it's about a recognition that discrimination and human rights abuses should not occur at all. At the Commission, we identify areas where work needs to be done to support the whole community and to try and change out-of-date attitudes that, and behaviours that lead to discrimination. And so we, our community of interest is all Victorians, whether they be people with disabilities, people with different religious beliefs, people who are same-sex attracted, people in the transgender community, people who are old or young, male or female. It's a very broad community. And we all need to work together. So many of you will probably think of the Commission if you've had contact with us and think of our complaints function. And that's certainly where the legislation started in Victoria. So people, if you've got a complaint of race discrimination or religious discrimination, you can contact us at the Commission, you can file a complaint and you can come through a dispute resolution process. And certainly last year we received 400 formal complaints that were about race or religious discrimination and we tried to solve those in really practical, confidential and fast ways. Um, and that is really important for individual disputes but we now realise that over time we need to make systemic change, that the issues we're facing are not about just two people not getting along, they're about issues across our whole community. So we use our complaints function to learn about projects that we would do in education, in research or different campaigns that we do. And it's really important that we use those. So over time, the Commission has moved from just a place where you take complaints to a place now that has functions of intervening in legal cases, 
of running education programs, as I said, of running campaigns, of doing research, which explains why when I was introduced, I had all these other things that I seemed to be doing, being on the Aboriginal Justice Forum, being involved with sporting organisations, all of that with the intention of removing things like homophobia, racism and sexism. Um, so in terms of the law then, we have responsibilities, this will be really fast, I won't make you go through too much law. <laughs> Three pieces of legislation, the Equal Opportunity Act, the Racial and Religious Tolerance Act and the Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities. So if I start with the Charter, um, some of you will know but many of you won't know that in Australia, even though we talk about human rights, Victoria is the only state, and the ACT also has a piece of legislation that actually enshrines human rights in our legislation. So in practice, that means that when any new piece of legislation comes through, the parliament does a human rights assessment of the legislation. When any cases go to court, they, uh, the courts consider human rights in their decision-making processes and when public authorities are delivering services to communities, they are obliged to consider the 20 um, human rights that are related to freedom, respect, equality and dignity. Uh, in particular, the Charter makes specific recognition of freedom of thought, conscience, religion and belief, including the freedom to choose to belong to any religion and the recognition no one can be coerced or restrained in a way that limits their freedom to adopt a religion. Similarly, there are cultural rights that also recognise that all persons with a particular cultural, religious, racial or linguistic background must not be the, denied the right in community with other persons of that background to enjoy his or her culture, to declare and practise his or her religion and to use his or her language. And that provision is often used in Victoria for the Aboriginal community. Uh, so, so there is still a lot of work to be done for the realisation of human rights in the future, but it's good to know the safeguards are there. The other key piece of legislation is the Equal Opportunity Act, which covers 18 grounds of discrimination. And as I said, it allows people to bring complaints, but it also um, lets us work on systemic problems of discrimination, producing policies, helping organisations to the work for Victoria Police that I suspect in a month you'll be reading a lot about um, is work to help them change their practices, to recognise that sex discrimination and sexual harassment is a big problem within police as they face other challenges with equality and that they want to change. Finally, the last piece of legislation, which is good to know we have, is the Racial and Religious Tolerance Act. Now, many of you I know in this room contributed to the debate about the Racial Discrimination Act and whether 18C should be repealed and what that would mean. But again, Victoria has its own piece of legislation, which is about um, allowing people the rights to complain should they be subject to vilification on the basis of their race or religion. So in short, in Victoria, that was my speedy version, but there actually are lots of protections in place for us. We do have strong laws and we do have a commission led by John that is really strongly here to promote equal opportunity in human rights. We also have the Victorian Multicultural Commission, which is really a fantastic example of Victoria showing its leadership in our multicultural and multi-faith community, which really works hard to support cohesion. We have government organisations and communities that if you put aside some of the louder voices that can distract us that are generally really committed to improving our experience of equality, to realising that um, terrorism is not the same as uh, the religion that it can be directed to. Um, but what we know is the Commission alone isn't going to make this change, that we all work together, that I know the people in this room work really well together and the fact that those are all the words on your banner really reflects that idea of unity, social cohesion and that if we can get there, there will be great benefits for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I just call on our executive member, Daniel Nash, to give the vote of thanks.
Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Commissioner, I'm delighted to be able to thank you for your remarks this evening. Uh, thank you for your introduction to the breadth of the Commission's work in promoting human rights and responding to racial and religious discrimination. Uh, if I can venture one conclusion to be drawn from your remarks, I think it's, it's the need for public figures in the community to reinforce the best of Australian values and to speak to how embracing a society we are. Uh, I trust everyone here this evening will share in the Commission's vision of a Victoria that embraces diversity and will appreciate the force with which you and the Commission drive that agenda. Uh, so I have here a gift as a small gesture of our appreciation. Uh, and just to say uh, thank you again, and on behalf of the Council, uh, I wish you and the Commission under the esteemed chairmanship of uh, past JCCV President John Searle uh, only the very best success. I think, I don't know if we're... I think so, potentially. <laughs> Um, it also gives me great pleasure to introduce our second speaker this evening. Um, it's a bit of a theme here, I think, which is about the strength of some of the women who take, have taken on leadership positions in, in our state. Um, I, I perhaps will just leave that there, but it gives me great pleasure <laughs> to welcome Helen Kaplos, who commenced her appointment as chair of the Victorian Multicultural Commission in August of this year. An accomplished journalist, presenter, executive producer and filmmaker, Helen is a proud Greek Australian who is passionate about supporting Victoria's culturally and linguistically diverse communities. Helen has also worked in a number of philanthropic roles, including Director at the Heart Foundation, Director of Federation Square, Ambassador for the Ovarian Cancer Research Foundation and Ambassador with Community Languages Australia. Helen's, Helen's successful media career has included working for all three Australian commercial television networks and the two public broadcasters. Helen has recently returned to filmmaking and documentary work as, exec, as executive producer of A Life of Its Own, a documentary that examines the truth about medical marijuana. And I know a number of you here would have been present when that was shown and there was a discussion on the topic in, in Beth Weitzman. Believing that we should never stop learning, Ms. Kapalos is completing a Master's in Journalism. So, Helen, thank you very much. I thought what we might do is just uh, play a little video in between, just to sort of break up the talks. But yes, okay, I'm not very good at this, so you might have to do that, David. While you do that, Oh, gosh, Kate, maybe. You know how Kate closed? It might have Oops. disappeared. Oops. <laughs> Last time I was here, that, yes, exactly. Last time I was here, though, was for... I was speaking to all of you about medical marijuana. That's exactly right. And it was... One, oh, here we are. Actually, what we'll do before we do this, so uh, just before I do commence, uh, yeah, last time I was here, um, I was addressing the community after I had just returned from Israel, and I guess it was at the end of a media career, some 23 years in the media, and I decided I'd take a new direction, and I was doing this documentary, but in hindsight, I think about the wonderful pathway that emerged from that because now, obviously, I interact with so many communities, and it did give me, the Jewish community in particular, and particularly in Israel and here, um, just the, the bounded nature of the communities and their triumph over adversity and their resilient spirit, I think, has really uh, guided a lot of the work that we're doing, and I'll talk about that in our just after this video. We've been putting together a little video that we're going to show later on this week, so you're getting a special little preview. It's kind of a new funky look for the VMC, so don't be too weirded out by it. But, uh, but this is just to give you an idea of the new direction that we're going in. Oh, geez. David, what's going on here? Hang on. It's me, is it? Oh, goodness. All right, so... Blame Rudy. Blame Rudy, yes, I know. Okay, I'm not very, I'm, really, I'm a champion Luddite, actually. Okay, so, that's not me, that's our comms person. And, yeah. I've just realised I've still got my tags on from work. That's not cool, is it? There we go. All right, so we'll just try and enlarge this. Here we go. Language 
classes to refugee resettlement and of course multicultural festivals. Uh, in, in Indian mythology, it's a king who fell in love with a river, so... Really? Yeah, it's <laughs> 